Welcome to The New Normal, a podcast brought to you by Cars.coza and made possible by ABSA. Hi, I'm consumer journalist Wendy Nola and this is part three of our discussion around the new normal when it comes to cars. In part one, we discussed consumers' current COVID-19 appetite for car buying and how the industry is responding to it. In part two, we focused on the how of the buying trading in process and how it's changed to comply with the need for physical distancing, etc. And now in part three, we're chatting about the impact of lockdown on car insurance policies. So lockdown forced us to stay home for many weeks, using our cars maybe once a week to buy groceries. And while there has been an easing in recent months, thank goodness, many of us will be working from home for the foreseeable future, at least on some days, meaning we're doing a lot less mileage. And that means, of course, that our risk as insured people is also reduced. And that should mean lower premiums. With me in Voice Anyway to discuss this is Edith Toshira McKinnon, who is CEO of the Ombudsman for Short-Term Insurance, and Tony van Niekerk, editor of the insurance industry magazine Cover. I think it's fair to say that the pay-as-you-drive model has really come into its own during hard lockdown, with some of us saving up to 80-90% on premiums as cars remained parked but for that brief weekly trip to the local shops. So we've seen several insurers introducing their own versions of premiums linked to kilometers driven per month policies, given that many people will continue to work from home for the foreseeable future and some permanently. School runs have also dramatically reduced and will remain so for some time. And surveys reveal that most consumers are now opting to shop very close to home. In a survey conducted by Cars.coza and APSA in answer to the question, had you known back in January what 2020 would hold, what car-related action would you have been most likely to take before lockdown? We asked the following questions. Sell your car, switch to an insurer which links premiums to kilometers driven, get your car serviced, or buy a car cover. 45% of respondents said that they would have switched to an insurer which linked premium to kilometres travelled per month. So, Edith, I'm going to start with you. Given that motor-related claims make up the bulk of complaints to your office, you must have seen a dramatic drop in the number of complaints in the lockdown period from, from, from April, I would imagine. Um, Correct, uh, Wendy. In April and May, we saw a drop of about 30% in our complaint volumes. But interestingly, we've seen an uptick in um, complaints to our office in June as and July, obviously as the lockdown levels have reduced. Um, however, the increase is not all motor. It is definitely a related to the COVID, what we call the COVID-19 related types of complaints, business interruption and others such as travel insurance. With regards to motor, there is still um, a reduced number of complaints compared to pre-lockdown coming to our office, correct? Okay. And and I, talking among yourselves, are you sort of predicting that to stay slightly reduced given that so many people I know are probably in your office as well, you're not all going to work every day as you used to. Are you expecting those complaint numbers relating to, to car claims to remain below what they were, say, in February of this year? Pro- probably, correct. Because, you know, even when we look at our complaint trends last year, um, as reflected in our 2019 annual report, 70% of the of motor complaints now motor complaints constitute around 50 percent of all the complaints that come to our office and of that 70 uh, percent relate to uh, motor vehicle accidents now with less vehicles on the road there will be less accidents less claims in that arena and therefore less complaints to our office and i think the difference in the number and the uptick is definitely related to the COVID 19 types of complaints right so as a consumer journalist, I have to say, would you say that it's fair to say that generally the insurance company's loss ratios then must have shifted in their favor quite significantly in the last four months? With, with regards to motor vehicle insurance, yes, sorry, yes, but that specifically. yes, but obviously insurers don't only insure motor vehicles, they have a diverse portfolio. And I'm sure that those that have, um, you know, offering the commercial 
types of claim um, policies will obviously, you know, their loss ratio might not be looking too good with regards to the COVID-19 related types of complaints. But in the motor arena, I would say yes. And hence these products that are coming out. I mean, you know, the pay-as-you-drive product has been around, but in a very reduced number. I mean, we've seen complaints to our office on this type of product in the past, but um, I don't think it's anything compared to what we're seeing now in the number of products now being offered by insurers. Okay, so Tony, from your perspective, looking at the industry, to what extent have motor insurers been agile and consumer focused and responding to their policyholders dramatically changed circumstances and thus dramatically reduced risk i mean obviously i'm speaking generally now for some um, that are still working from home it is dramatically reduced for others they might be closer to what they were in february but not quite are you seeing a dramatic shift in the way they're tailoring or their existing policy policies or inventing new ones to 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 fit with this new normal Yes, I, I mean, it's always, Wendy, the, the bottom line of insurance is that it is the premium is risk-related and insurers have a certain premium that they charge because they've estimated a certain risk. And if that risk changes, then obviously either the premium can go up or the premium can go down. And I'm excited to say that, you know, with my connections overseas, that South Africa was one of the first countries in the world and also one that was most proactive in assisting their clients in this way. For instance, a lot of the companies, insurance companies, simply either provided an immediate discount in premium, saying we'll drop your premiums by 20% or whatever the different percentages were, or they would have said that we would be giving you a bigger bonus back based on those, those premiums. So the companies did respond because obviously they would have immediately been able to see that there's a drop in the risk. But uh, from that perspective as well, I mean, uh, as we spoke before the, the this podcast, the COVID sort of revealed things that was already happening before. In other words, the, the uh, pay-as-you-go type of model. This would probably be accelerated now with companies seeing that it is worthwhile because there is now a reasonably dramatic shift, and they probably will be with people working from home, etc. So there would be a reasonable impact on that risk rating. And therefore, for most insurers, it would make sense to look at how do they actually then benefit the clients through that change in the risk experience. So as hard as it is to predict anything at the moment, do you think this is likely to be one of the more lasting impacts of COVID-19 on motor insurance products, this switch to ensuring your actual risk related to the more or less the amount of time that you're spending on the road or not? Yes, I think so. I mean, I'm just to, to, to mention that the amount of time you spend on the road has always been a factor. Although previously, for the most part, it was sort of on an honesty basis. In other words, the insurer would ask you, how much do you drive? And you would put on your application, I drive X amount. It would simply take you as being honest and use that to risk to rate your risk. And then only if they see that it changes, would they increase your premium? Or if obviously you have more incidents, they would increase the premium. With technology that we've got nowadays, we are able to estimate that more accurately. The flip side of that, just to mention, is that somebody who drives a lot might actually pay more because of the fact they fall on the wrong side of the risk rating now where they were previously more average. They could be identified. But all of that means that a guy that looks after his risks, that drives carefully, that only drives when necessary, etc., benefits from him reducing his own risk, which is a good thing for insurance as well. Yeah, and it's, it's a more precise way of insuring your actual risk. I mean, if, if the more you're on the road, the more risk you present as, a, as an insured and um, your premium, that part of your premium should certainly be linked to that as accurately as possible. Speaking of insurance of, of, of policies, do you, are you getting any sense from the industry, either of you, about the extent to which people who are now short of money, their salaries have dried up or been reduced quite significantly, to what extent is that having an impact on people letting their policies lapse 
or, or just choosing to cancel them outright. I mean, I certainly, as a, I only hear when things go wrong, but I've heard from quite a few very unfortunate people who got their timing wrong, cancelled, and then had an accident sort of three, four days later, sometime into April or May. Uh, is there is there much of there any statistics around this that you know of? Wendy, from our office, I think it's early days. We may have seen one or two such complaints, but there's not a trend um, at this stage, so to speak. Of I think this will probably become more evident with time. You know, I just wanted to mention that if your insurer is offering you the premium payment holidays, it's not necessarily a given that you're going to get it, you really do need to call your insurer and ask them for this in most cases. Yes, and if you do change the type of cover or the type of use from perhaps you were using your vehicle for business and now you want to change it to private, you know, as, as meetings are not happening or you may be working from home, meetings are not happening in the office, just remember that under private use, there is a limited number of times that you can actually use your vehicle to go to meetings, to meet clients, uh, to have business meetings. So always be aware that if you've changed your cover, you're not using your vehicle contrary to the cover and the premium that you are paying. That is such excellent advice. I remember now seeing that in your latest briefcase, I think you mentioned that because it applies to a lot of people, I dare say. Correct, Wendy. And also, you know, if there are two vehicles in the household and, you know, the insureds decide only one vehicle is going to be used predominantly and you change the cover to third party fire and theft, just remember that if you're on the road with that vehicle, you're not going to be covered for your, for your accident. So be very careful if you do change the cover. Don't just, in other words, chase a premium reduction. Realize the full impact of the change in the cover in the event that you do find yourself in a situation where you're not covered and having to not only pay for your own damages, but maybe a third party's damages as well. And I'm getting a few of those. I'm getting, I'm getting a few of those. It's, and of course, with a third party claim, if they're not happy with what the other person's insurer has paid them, yes. they can't come to your office because they aren't the client. The car was valued at 74000 and he was paid out 13000 very aggrieved because of all the usual failure to keep a proper lookout. We know, you know, you're partly to blame and all the rest. And I had to say, I'm sorry, you know, you, you, there's not much recourse you have other than the legal recourse, you know, and if it doesn't fall within the jurisdiction of the small claims court, then you have to go to um, the man, you know, the magistrate's court. And it's, it's all very costly at the end of the day. Yeah, more costly than your premium would have been if you just found a way to keep paying it, I dare say. Tony, any thoughts on, on that? What you're hearing from industry about lapses, etc., or people changing from comprehensive to third party only on their vehicles? Yes, um, in, in anticipation of, of this, after your request, I messaged a few people quickly. Obviously, this is like a, a quick a top of mind thing. Um, and I think this, again, is, it, it is an indication of how insurance clients in general behave. There hasn't been much of, of quick cancellations because people think, oh, well, I'm not driving, etc. So that hasn't really been a a motivation to cancel. As it did said, you know, what we might see is as people's income dry up and the expenses starts to bite, that they might be looking at cancelling insurance. But what we can also keep in mind, and this is basically on, on client behavior in general, is that if we look at only a third of the cars on the road being insured, the third of people that are insuring their cars made a specific decision that they don't want to carry the risk themselves. And therefore, they won't easily just cancel because they think the risk is less. I think the impact is probably going to be a bit more on people who are not insured or haven't been insured, not making a decision to insure as they go forward. In other words, staying under risk themselves. That's a very good point. Being less, even less in a position to insure their vehicles than they were before. Of course, the other trend that is happening that we've spoken about in podcast one is people choosing to sell their cars to trade them in for a much cheaper model so they're not paying, you know, 8,000 rand a month to the bank, but maybe three or four. And of course, with that, the insurance premium will come down as well. So that will probably be reflected in, on a lot of insurance books. So much more we could discuss, but I think um, we've covered the main things. Thank you, both of you, for your time and your insights. Much appreciated. Thank you.
Drive safe. Thank you for listening to The New Normal, a podcast brought to you by Cars.coza and made possible by Absa.